Originally, I thought Node.js was just a runtime for JavaScript code. I also knew that it had a standard library, mainly I was familiar with console, error, and path that let you do trivial things like print to the console and throw errors, but I didn't realize how much you could do with just plain Node. Normally, I'm very quick to install npm packages to get the tools I need, but the Node.js standard library, which is also called their built-in modules, often already has these functionalities. I think this misconception comes from the belief that you need third-party APIs and frameworks to do anything in Node, but this is simply not the case. The first REST API I built in Node took advantage of the framework Express.js, and I really enjoyed using this framework, but I was under the impression that you needed Express to build a web server. It had all these dependencies, and I assumed that to even get a local server up and running, you needed a framework. But this is actually far from the truth. Literally on the homepage of the Node docs, there's code very similar to Express that starts up an API. If we look at the Node and Express code side by side, we see that they're very similar. One thing we can see that's different is that Express abstracts writing headers and exchanges it for specific response methods. So res.send in Express is equivalent to res.setHeader and then setting the content type to text in just plain Node. This means you need to have a deeper understanding of the HTTP protocol if you're not using Express. When I started out as a beginner writing my first API, to be honest, I didn't know what headers were. Express let me gloss over that fact. And of course, I ended up running into them down the line when I had to deal with authorization. But you can see how these abstractions are both good and bad because they hide information, but they also let you move forward. This is a very simple server. In fact, this code is literally just starting one up. If we were to expand this server and add tons of routes, Express would shine much more. And one thing I found is that URL matching is much harder to do without Express. Node.js doesn't know what dynamic URLs are, and you actually have to pattern match the URLs yourself using some regex or other algorithm. And if you're scaling that up, that is really hard to maintain. Another sector is cryptography. I've always used bcrypt.js for hashing and verifying passwords, but I found that Node's native crypto API can do a lot of this heavy lifting. And the reason why Node has its own cryptography API is so developers don't have to use a third-party package that could possibly introduce insecure code into their project. With the native crypto API for password hashing, it lets you use the script algorithm, which is newer than bcrypt and wards off modern brute force attacks. But the caveat here is that you usually have to have a good understanding of these cryptographic algorithms to use the built-in crypto API. What bcrypt is doing is essentially giving you two functions, one function to hash your password and then another to verify it. And you don't have to worry about what's going on behind the scenes because the bcrypt package is implementing the bcrypt algorithm for you. Now with the native crypto API, you have to implement these algorithms yourself. And this brings up an array of problems. You first have to know these algorithms. You have to know how to write secure code and you also have to maintain this. So there are pros and cons. And I think this all comes back to the nature of JavaScript. JavaScript is a plug and play language. We can put it on the web and we can put it on the server and it's starting to even appear in other places. And I'm gonna be making a video about this sort of explaining how the JavaScript programming language works and some misconceptions. So I'll leave a link to it when it's ready. But essentially you have what are called environment APIs. If you have JavaScript on the web, you're gonna have access to the browser APIs and this includes the DOM API. And when you put JavaScript in a different place, like the server, you'll have access to different environment APIs. So that's going to be the Node.js standard library if you're on the server. And then lastly, you have the third-party APIs, and these are NPM packages. And I feel that developers are so caught up in the third-party packages because that's what everyone's talking about, that they forget about the environment APIs. 
And I think before you use an NPM package to implement something, you should go through these steps. The first step to see if your solution can be implemented with the built-ins. So password hashing, for example, can it be implemented with plain node? Yes, it can, because we have access to the crypto API. And then step two is to see if this implementation is easy, maintainable, etc. And for this particular example, the answer for me as a developer is no, because I'm not an expert in cryptography, I don't know how the cryptographic algorithms work, and I don't really want to research how they work because it's going to take a lot of time and I really just want to hash a password for my user. And also, I don't want to be responsible for maintaining that, especially maintaining algorithms related to security, because there's a lot at stake there. And step three would be to choose whether to use that native solution or third-party API. And in this case, I would go with something like Bcrypt.js because it's a viable solution based on the steps I went through. But after really delving into the Node.js documentation, I feel like I have more control over my code and I don't necessarily have to rely on a third-party package. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be writing all my code in plain Node.js. 90% of the time, I will use that third-party package, but that other 10%, I might implement it myself. And that 10% often comes up when I'm trying to implement very basic things that I don't need a package for. And also, sometimes in enterprise situations, companies have regulations, on what third-party packages can be used. Now, I'm sure your company is not going to prevent you from using ExpressJS because it's a well-known framework and has millions of downloads every week, but stuff-related security, they may be skeptical about. Also, another thing, specifically for web development, is that when you install NPM packages on the web, you increase your bundle size, so that could also potentially slow down your app. So next time, I'll think about if I can accomplish this first using the built-in modules. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.